Well, certainly we are reminded in the first reading from Acts of the Apostles that the life of faith is no cakewalk. It's not simple. And it's not simply a matter of being baptized and saying, oh, I'm a Christian, therefore I'm saved. Well, you're a Christian, you're called to salvation. Uh, It's not carte blanche to do anything you darn well please and say, oh, I'm so sorry at the very end and say, well, there you go. We who have been instructed, we who know what the Lord requires, what the Lord demands, if you will, of those who follow him, we know what we must do. We know how we must make the world a much better place, locally, nationally, internationally. We know the call of the true disciple. It hasn't changed from day one. The apostles in the gospel today are feeling the intensity of being without the Lord. He speaks of what will happen as he enters Jerusalem. What must happen as he enters Jerusalem. And they don't want to hear it. And we're no strangers to this as we sit by the bedside of a loved one and we hear the doctors, the nurses, hospice workers. We don't want to hear it. We don't want to acknowledge it. We try to prepare ourselves for it for when it happens. But there is no real ultimate preparing for the moments of transition. The challenge that Jesus is trying to get across to the apostles and to you and I is do not get stuck. Do not high center yourself on a moment of sadness, sorrow, and loss. Do not look forward to what you're going to lose, but look beyond that to what you will gain, to what will be granted, to what will be given to you. Have the faith, stay the course. We are still in the Easter season, a season of hope, the fulfillment of God's promise, the fulfillment of Christ to go before us, preparing a place for us, And so let us remember that we are always truly blessed. Even in the midst of hardships, temptation, crisis, struggle, whatever it is, we are always blessed with God's presence. It's a shame that we don't always lean on that presence of Christ that is always with us. We know that over the last year we've been pretty much lulled into the big comfy couch. We know That is not the ideal. The apostles physically came to the table at the Last Supper. They physically entered into those places after the resurrection and still proclaimed the name of Christ. We know that we are called to physically be present with Christ in word and sacrament. Thanks be to God and the Supreme Court. We're no longer closed or shut down. We're still functioning, alive and thriving. Come home, come back to the table. Make every concerted effort to be present on the Lord's day, physically present, because it is Christ who strengthens us. A spiritual communion is nice, but it's just spiritual. It's not the real moment of encounter the physical Eucharist in our hand, receiving, consuming, knowing that Christ within us, uniquely within us in the Eucharist, continues to shape and fashion us into something greater. Make no mistake, it's good to be connected on a daily basis to our faith. We are so grateful that you're there. But remember, the Lord invites you here. Make every effort, look at your schedules, look at your life. Make every effort, especially on the Lord's Day, to be present along with your brothers and sisters, for you are part of the body of Christ. Without you, the body is not as strong, the body is less. 
be present to Christ each and every day. And in through your words, your actions, by his presence among and within you. But above all, respond to his call to honor him on his day. <laughs>